And welcome. It's Corporate Governance Platform brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. Ixan, a leading recognized professional body in Nigeria dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. It's the only professional body authorized in Nigeria to conduct examinations leading to the qualification of chartered secretaries and administrators. Today on the program, we're going to be looking at guides to effective remuneration policy. Guides to effective remuneration policy. Our guest this morning, Mrs. Yetunde Imano, ACIS, Mobilization Secretary of the Lagos State Chapter of Ixan and also Company Secretary Chams PLC and IT company. Good morning, Mrs. Yetunde Imano. Good morning, our view, our listeners. All right. Also here is Mr. Kaede Ketefe, FCIS, uh, of course, Head of Research, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning for me. All our listeners, good morning to you all. All right, we're going to take this message and we'll be right back. Hey, Obina, good to see you. Uh, you look so worried. Is everything all right? I'm having serious issues in my company. Balancing the interests of my company's many stakeholders like shareholders, management, customers, financiers, governments, and communities giving us a problem. Mm, that has to do with corporate governance. Exactly. Then, you need to get in touch with ICSAN. Ixan? Yeah. Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria. ICSAN. They provide you with seasoned and top-ranking professionals trained to uphold the standards of corporate governance and efficient operations. You can also get in touch with Ixan if you want to become a chartered secretary and administrator. Contact Ixan by visiting the website www.ixan.org or call 0096-601-69. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. So corporate governance platform right here. And like I said earlier, we're looking at guides to effective remuneration policy. Okay, remuneration is definitely a very cardinal issue in corporate governance. So what are the implications if an organization does not get it right? I'll start by defining remuneration. Remuneration is the reward for all efforts that has been done by the employees in an organization. And it's also a financial reward or incentive given to the employees, executive or directors, for maximizing shareholders' interests. Now, remuneration can be in form of cash, benefits, or shares. And the structure could be short, medium, or long-term. Now, in the Corporate Governance Code, Principle 11.3 provides for the committee responsible for remuneration, which is a remuneration committee. Now, this remuneration committee is established at the board level at a, as a subgroup of the board for recommending to the board a remuneration framework for executives and to scrutinize the decision of the board which concerns rewards, salary, bonus, share options, superannuation, payments, commission, company has private health insurance, and participation in profit sharing with shareholders, as well as advantageous pension contributions for corporate executives. It is important to note that the independence of this remuneration committee is very germane to improving the performance of the board. Now, the remuneration committee determines the remuneration policy of the company. And the purpose of that remuneration policy is to outline key principles for remuneration, allowing the board and management to keep, to keep and attract the best employees on the respective fields of work whilst ensuring a high degree of goal alignment between the employee and the companies. Now, the implication of not getting it right are that the employees will, be, will not be motivated to increase their productivity and improve their performance and output, thereby leading to poor job performance. Also, remuneration will not be seen as fair and equitable for employees when an organization does not get it right. Employees will also not be willing to or show enthusiasm towards complying with workplace laws and regulations. And there will be a very high turnover of staff as employees will be desperate, re desperately seeking employment in other organizations.
for better remuneration and incentives. Okay, now let's look at the basic functions of the remuneration committee as provided under the court. Okay. Under the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance, the functions of the remuneration committee include, among others, development of a formal, clear, and transparent framework for the company's remuneration policies and procedures, recommendation to the board on the company's remuneration policy and structure for all directors and senior management employees. In addition to the responsibilities under the Nigerian Code of Corporate Governance, the remuneration committee also monitors and advises executives on important decisions concerning remuneration and rewards. The remuneration also committee also provides monitoring and oversight function with the aim of protecting the interest of shareholders by delivering an objective and independent review to executive management. Another responsibility is to ensure that the interests of shareholders and executive management are closely aligned. Thank you. All uh, right. Now, the catchphrase uh, in corporate governance parlance that uh, the remuneration should be sufficient to attract, retain, and motivate, uh, but it should not be excessive. Let, let's see if you can expatiate a little bit on this principle and why it's desirable. Okay. It is true that um, the level and makeup of uh, remuneration should be sufficient to attract and retain the directors needed to run the company successfully. Now, this will enhance transparency. Transparency. But stock exchange regulations also require listed companies to have full remuneration disclosures and policies for executives in their annual reports. And this will also protect the shareholders and potential investors, create trust and fairness, which are important elements that must, ex that must exist in the issue of directors' remuneration. Now, the procedure and systems in the company require showing that trust exists between the shareholders and the executives and a company in running, which is running, with a reasonable standard of fairness. Now, all this will decrease the risk of excessive remuneration and help to align the interests of both the directors and the shareholders. Mm, all right. Uh, now, the remuneration committee is entrusted under the code with developing a policy on the nature, extent and terms under which the external auditors may perform non-audit services. Now, why do you think this duty is given to remuneration committee and not the audit committee that normally deals with external auditor? You know, the law strictly provides for the powers of the audit committee and all these services to be rendered by the external auditor. The Companies and Allied Matters Act actually provides that the auditor shall make reports to an audit committee. And the principle under the corporate governance, Nigerian corporate governance group provides that the board should consider assigning the responsibilities for the determination of remuneration policy and its application to executive management, performance evaluation, the adoption of incentive plans and various governance responsibilities related to remuneration to a stand-alone committee or to any other committee capable of combining it with their existing function as is appropriate. In other words, remuneration is a non-audit issue that is assigned to the remuneration committee and not the audit committee. Mm -hmm. now, the notion of a separation of ownership from control is uh, at the center of remuneration problem in corporate governance. Can you explain this notion vis-a-vis uh, -vis remuneration issue? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. In examining the notion of separation of ownership and control in modern companies, it is apparent that we are dealing with the separation of the major powers over an organization from the major interest, which is a pure agency relationship. The major interests are the investors or the shareholders. Now, this has to do with extent of managers or controllers' accountability to investors who are the owners of the companies. Now, the shareholders who, those are the shareholders who own the capital. They are the owners of the company. Now, the remuneration problem is the agency costs and how to provide the managers or controllers with incentives that would induce behavior beneficial to the investors or shareholders. The owners must provide appropriate incentives in terms of remuneration for the managers or controllers in order to guarantee that the managers will not take certain action, actions that will arm or endanger the owner's investments. It is therefore important for companies to ensure that remuneration packages for directors or employees and senior management are structured based on strong fundamentals that is linked to the company's objectives and they do not diminish shareholders' returns or the confidence of the public in the business. 
This will also help to the company to attract and retain talent, particularly at the leadership level, as remuneration plays a vital role in attracting and retaining highly skilled directors and employees. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Yitunde Imano. Mr. Ketefe, I'm coming to you for some announcements. Thank you very much for me. The announcement we have today is on giving information on exam professional examination leading to qualification as a charter secretary and administrator. The exam educational and professional structure is dedicated to the task of broadening the professional horizons of tomorrow's managers by providing program on a wide range of subjects that lead to a qualification which is nationally and internationally recognized. To become a charter secretary and administrator, you need to write the professional examination of the institute. No one becomes a member of the institute without passing the qualifying examination or the training specified by the governing council of the institute. Ixan and his member lead in shaping the corporate governance agenda and promoting best practices which are essential for organizational performance. Charter secretaries are high-ranking professionals with a broad base of skills unique among other professions. They are trained in law, finance, accounting, administration, strategy development, and corporate governance. Data secretaries provide the focal point for independent advice and guidance on the conduct of business, governance, and compliance. Data secretaries and administrators are found in every sector of the economy. They are found as company secretaries, general managers, finance managers, chief accountants, heads of finance, directors of administration, chairman and chief executive of public and private companies, as well as in the civil service and prestators. You too can start this professional journey to become a charter secretary and administrator by registering for June 2021 exam examination. The registration for the said June 2021 exam professional examination is currently ongoing. Lecture for this diet will start on Saturday, January 30th, 2021. Come and register now and start preparing for your examination to become a member of a profession that is not only relevant now, but which is guaranteed to be even more so in future. If you so wish, you can also register now as a student and later register for any diet examination at your convenient time. Registration as a student is always ongoing. For more information on issues relating to examination and registration as a student, please Call this number 080 I take it again 080 Thank you and have a pleasant day. All right, thank you, Mr. Ketefe. But when you said um, uh, students, what category of students are we talking about? We're we talking about those who just uh, finished secondary school or those in high institutions. What uh, category of students? Thank you very much for that uh, question. When I talk about students, it's students of all categories. Okay. If you want to begin from the initial stage, secondary school students can enroll. That means they are going to be taken through the whole gamut of all the su subjects. Okay. But specifically graduates. Graduates start at an enhanced level. Okay. And if you are a graduate, it also depends on your discipline to determine the number of subjects you write. For example, some graduates are given enhanced exemption. If you are a graduate of law or accountancy, you are given enhanced exemptions. Okay. That is, the number, the number of papers you write will be far less than somebody who uh, who has a degree in a non-related uh, discipline. Okay. So that is... All right. Uh, All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kayode Ketefe, FCIS, Head of Research, excellent, and also have to say a very big thank you to our guest speaker today, Mrs. Yetunde Imano, SCIS, Mobilization Secretary of the Lagos State Chapter of Ixan, and also Company you, Secretary, Champs PLC and IT companies. Wonderful having you on the program this morning. Thank you for having me for me. All right, of course, corporate governance platform returns next week, Wednesday, 10 15 a.m. right here on Equity 9.7 FM. I am Fumi Omoburiu. Good morning once again and enjoy the rest of the day. Right.